It's about to get heated inside the well tonight. The defending tournament champions are in the house. South Carolina coming in this year as the two seed. They are getting ready to make their debut in the tournament this year, taking on the seven in Alabama. Two top seeds have already punched their tickets to the semifinals. Texas A&M advancing to its sixth semifinal in the last nine years. Five players in double figures against LSU today, led by Kayla Wells with 16. They will take on a Georgia team who had two players score 20 points each. 86% of their points earlier today came from seniors. So that will be our first semifinal tomorrow. Texas A&M and Georgia, who will meet them there? The winner of South Carolina, Alabama, gets either Tennessee or Ole Miss tomorrow in the semifinals. Welcome to Greenville, South Carolina. Courtney Lau alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. All right, first time we get to see South Carolina. This has been their tournament as of late, but they're coming in after a loss. Well, and Andy Landers put it perfectly when he said, you know what, it's an opportunity to talk about the memories of last year. Bring happy thoughts back to this team. So hit the reset button and you're starting game one going after a championship. Hey, they should have a lot of confidence in this tournament. South Carolina has been the one or two seed the last seven seasons in the SEC tournament. They've only lost one game in this tournament over the last six years and they have won five out of the last six SEC tournament titles. If that is not confidence, I don't know what is. They come in this year with the reigning SEC freshman of the year, or excuse me, national freshman of the year, who is now a sophomore in Aaliyah Boston who can make all the difference. Well, Aaliyah Boston is first team all SEC. She was not SEC player of the year. I expect her to be motivated. She also was the defensive player of the year. And South Carolina is going to have to play through her to continue to advance if they want to get to the semis and on to the finals. They'll be playing Alabama, Steffi Sorensen, who is led by the trio of Jordan Lewis, Jasmine Walker, and Araya Copeland. They make this tied team go. Yeah, Christy Curry wants 40 minutes of perfect basketball from this Crimson Tide team, and they're led by that trio, and they have to come up big, and it means playing well all at the same time. Look, this group has paved the way for Alabama this season. Their numbers are up across the board, career numbers, but Araya Copeland, a key point for Alabama because she has struggled against South Carolina. She's got to get into double figures and stay out of foul trouble for them to have a chance tonight. Steffi, they've got to have the third leg of the stool. You know, you got to have three legs to make the stool be balanced, and that's what Alabama needs. Nothing to lose for Alabama. They are in the tournament, but they could pull up a big upset if they beat South Carolina here tonight. Winner on to the semifinals. And South Carolina is starting out in a man-to-man -man defense. And you look at the length, Victoria Saxon guarding Jasmine Walker. Alabama started out so hot from the field. They hit their first eight shots in that second round game against Missouri. Shot 51% from the field. It'll be a challenge for South Carolina to slow them down. This has been the mainstay starting lineup. Destiny Henderson is the one running the point this year for Carolina. Well, and Destiny Anderson is going to have to orchestrate against this zone of Alabama. Alabama really wants to really build a wall and not let the basketball come in the paint. Bree Beal takes a shot from the outside, comes down into the hands of Megan Abrams. How big was Abrams yesterday for Alabama? Christy Curry said she needed somebody else to help out the big three, and Megan Abrams answered the call. 19 points yesterday. Help ball possession arrow is pointing to South Carolina. Christy Curry a little bit more relieved when we talk to her today when it comes to the NCAA tournament because they do feel like they are definitely in. Charlie Cream feels like that too, but they're ready to upset this Carolina team. Can I do a Christy Curry impression? Please. Pat, I think that we're dancing. Yeah. <laughs> and I will buy a pair of cowboy boots to go to San Antonio. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Alabama would be in the tournament for the first time since 1999, and South Carolina is able to finish through contact. Getting the ball in the paint. You've got to give the ball to Aaliyah Boston. She is the most dominant post in the SEC. It doesn't matter if it's one player, two player, or even three sometimes. She can get the ball and go make it happen. The SEC co-defensive player of the year, second in the SEC in rebounds per game, ninth in field goal percentage, second in blocks per game. I think she's the most dominant post in the country. 
and she's just a sophomore. And what I love about her game is that she thinks the game, positioning of her body, and really plays with a strategy, not just using her height. Mosiah Cook accidentally bumped Hannah Barber as she was trying to go for the ball in the air. Well, Cook deflects it there, but then steps to the ball and gets the foul. And then it right away goes to Hannah Barber. Great sportsmanship to help her back up. Jasmine Walker drives and kicks back out to Jordan Lewis, number three in crimson. Impressed in how connected defensively South Carolina is. You watch penetration, watch all five players rotate. And Destiny Henderson even gets a deflection. Well, the word for South Carolina recently has been deliberate. Absolutely. Every time we talk to a South Carolina Gamecock, they use that word, whether it's being deliberate on offense, deliberate on defense. Don Staley has instilled that into South Carolina. She didn't want any gray areas. Don't second guess what you're doing. When you're deliberate, you have confidence and you know exactly how to execute. Shot clock violation. What a defensive stop for South Carolina. South Carolina just looks well connected right now defensively. You just watch in the, other, the first two possessions defensively, whenever penetrate happened, normally it's maybe one or two that are rotating. All five players are in motion. South Carolina coming off that loss to Texas A&M on Sunday. It was a great basketball game, but Texas A&M won the SEC regular season title for the first time. Destiny Henderson hits. I don't think the Gamecocks have forgotten about that. No, not, not whatsoever. And I believe that it was an attention getter. The team now knows, listen, I have to listen to this coaching staff. I have to follow instructions, not do my own thing. That's going to be a foul on Victoria Saxton. Well, again, get a post touch, especially against the defense of South Carolina, a defense of Alabama, because they're trying to shut down the paint. If you at least let get a, a piece of the paint or post touch, then the, the post are willing to pass it back out. Walker's shot is off. Henderson can go so fast, but loses the basketball. Hannah Barber's got it, tosses it back to Carolina. Alabama's going to have to be strategic of when they run against South Carolina. You don't have numbers. You can't get ahead of the pack. Hey, execute your offense. And that pass down low off of Bree Beal's foot. It'll be a turnover. Alabama will take it. Alabama has been an impressive team to watch, too. They've had back-to-back -back eight win SEC seasons for the first time since 96-97. Won five of their first SEC games for the first time since 98. See, now Jasmine Walker, because of the switch, she had Aaliyah Boston on her. You need to give Walker the ball back and let her do a clear out. Let her go one-on-one -on -one and get, you could possibly get Aaliyah Boston in some foul trouble. I'm interested to see how Jasmine Walker fares in this game. Didn't have her best game yesterday against Missouri. She still had 11 points. A lot of those, to get her to double figures, were free throws when Missouri was fouling at the end. And Christy Curry just was trying to talk to her yesterday about there are other ways you can impact the game. Get to the free throw line. She even at times took her inside to post up. We'll see if she uses those options today to get her going. You think Destiny Henderson is fired up right now? She likes playing against Alabama. <laughs> she has put up great numbers against Alabama in the first game. Henderson had 20 points in the second game, 14 double digits both times. And she had seven assists in that second game to go along with it. Megan Abrams driving in, shoots over Aaliyah Boston. Walker on cleanup duty. Finally, South Carolina will get the rebound. Up ahead to Zaya Cook. Cook at the logo. Uh-oh. Ten straight for South Carolina. You think they like to play in the SEC tournament? You think they've got the reset button set? They're all about championships, and they have come with all guns a-blazing coming out in this first quarter. They are running. They are pushing. They are looking for opportunities to score. Hey, they're connected. They're playing as a team. They're very comfortable in the SEC tournament, and they got championship on their mind. Unfinished business for South Carolina. We'll talk about that when you come back to Greenville. 
South Carolina making a statement with its opening run, 10 straight points for the Gamecocks. They, of course, are the defending SEC tournament champions. Cordy Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Steffi Sorensen with you. And it's interesting that we see South Carolina come in not as the number one seed. It's kind of unusual. Well, and I asked Don Staley about that. And, you know, most players, most people would say, well, if we weren't number one coming in, I got a chip on my shoulder. That's not what Don Staley had to say. I'd rather be the top dog, to be quite honest. Because the top dog, you, you, you play with a little bit more confidence. You're not playing wounded. You know, we, I think we're a little wounded because we, we didn't get what we wanted. Um, but we're here. We're, we're here. We're, we're 19 and 4. We are where we are supposed to be. South Carolina has had a really good season. This is a good basketball team, and they are making a statement to start this one, even though they're coming off that loss. Yeah, and Aaliyah Boston, the super sophomore, has put up really big numbers. She's trying to rally the troops, and they're trying to get back to that March mentality. Just know that from here on out, it's win or go home. And we don't want to go home. So we know that we need to make sure we're dialed in and listening to everything that the coaches are saying to us so that we can make sure we continue our, our business. Yeah, it was kind of surprising for some people that Aaliyah Boston was not the SEC player of the year. I mean, Ryan Howard, very well deserving, but I like that coming in with the chip. And you see how they have started this first quarter. They are well connected. In that Texas A&M game, they, they look to have a disconnect. It looked like each person was trying to do it themselves. And today, in these first five minutes, they look like a team. Because it's going to take a team through this conference. The SEC is tough. You, there's not one player that can do it by themselves. Turnover. Destiny Henderson comes out with it. Coast to coast. Henderson already has seven points to lead South Carolina. Alabama has yet to score. 0 for 4 to start. Ten points. All five Bama turnovers. Jasmine Walker trying to break down Bree Beal. Beal is known to be on the best player of the opponent. Good dish inside to Araya Copeland. And finally, Alabama is on the board. You watch Copeland and Aaliyah Boston. They're going to have some, they're going to be tangled up a few times throughout tonight. Boston finds Zaya Cook. If Cook is feeling it, it's trouble. The ball moves, it's trouble. Because the offense for South Carolina, the percentage goes up when a lot of people get to touch the basketball. Smart decision there by Aaliyah Boston to find Cook. South Carolina starting out six for seven, looking like Alabama last night. Yeah, but I, I can guarantee it that South Carolina, I know that they watched that game together. So they understood the amount of concentration and focus they were going to need because Alabama is a capable scoring basketball team. They're making it hard on Jasmine Walker right now. Lee Grissett down low. Copeland blocks her and takes the ball. Lee Grissett, she rotated in for Victoria Saxon at the four position. Normally Grissett plays and on the, she ends up on the floor, but normally she plays a guard spot. Set with the rebound. Time for South Carolina to reset this. Boston's working hard on Copeland. I didn't like that execution. Both ball screens. The guards did not wait on the screen to happen. But a travel by Alabama, and South Carolina's gonna get the ball back. Another turnover, but watch Destiny Henderson. The defense had the advantage, well, for a second, but Henderson has another speed. And then there is Zaya Cook. 
There were about four passes before the ball got to number one, Zaya Cook, but that was a rhythm shot, good shot for South Carolina. Gamecocks get it back. Bree Beal got all alone. Movement without the basketball. South Carolina right now, they're clicking on all cylinders. It must have been a good week of practice for South Carolina to come into the tournament shooting 64% from the field to start. But when you play not until Friday, that gives you an opportunity as a coach with your team is to focus on yourself. And Don Staley said one of the things that she focused was on the offense. Well, it looks their de like their defense got a little fine-tuned also. And South Carolina is dangerous in transition. One of the best in the country running off their defense to offense to make things happen. They average 17 fast break points a game. That bucket is going to go in for Jordan Lewis, and she'll go to the free throw line. Fouls on Letitia Me here. You guys are talking a lot about del being deliberate and the message that has been sent from Don Staley. Peck, what I've seen so far from South Carolina is no wasted dribbles, no bad shots. Seems like the message has been sent and well received for South Carolina to start this game. Well, there's no better way to really point out areas that you need to correct them with a loss. You know, winning can care, can cover up a lot of warts, but when you lose, you pay attention to the details. South Carolina has only lost four games this season, two in SEC play to Tennessee and then Texas A&M in the regular season finale. Well, here's going to be the difference, too, for South Carolina. They have already, they've subbed in four, I think three players already, where Alabama's bench, they didn't contribute at all point-wise yesterday. Alabama only gets 11 points a game for the season from their bench, and as you said, didn't get much, didn't get very many yesterday. The first quarter for Alabama yesterday was as sharp as I've seen them offensively. 28 points, they went 12, 10 of 12 from the field. It was a beautiful thing to watch. I had so much fun in that first quarter. I may have had more fun than Christy Curry, yeah. <laughs> but I was enjoying it because Alabama just, they took good shots. They were just hitting the bottom of the net. It was fun to, fun to watch. Amihir's shot will drop. Not the case for Alabama tonight, as you saw. Two for ten to start. Well, this is what you want to do. When you are the defending tournament champions, you don't want any question, any doubt in your mind. You want to set the tone from the second you step on the court. South Carolina has done that so far, and they should feel confident against Alabama. They have won 18 straight against the Crimson Tide. Alabama hasn't beaten South Carolina since 2008. Destiny Rice got in trouble. Hannah Barber for three. This is the defense of South Carolina we're used to seeing. Ami here is fouled on the floor by Allie Craig Cruz. Letitia Ami here giving South Carolina some good minutes too. Everybody's got something they've brought to the party. Locked in and ready to go for the SEC tournament. Megan Abrams back to Cruz. Lily Grissett throws it away. Alabama can take the last shot, but it has been a struggle. 17% from the field. There's one from Megan Abrams. Maybe she can get going her first points. But that was a little early in the shot clock. Alabama now has given another possession to South Carolina. And Zaya Cook has the basketball. 
and she gets fouled. Taylor Sutton fouls Zaya Cook. Well, they had a foul to give. So now South Carolina only has 3.5 seconds to score. But if anybody can score with a quickness, it's Zaya Cook. And she's easily able to get the ball. Cooking with gas in Greenville. We said it was going to get heated. South Carolina with a 20-point lead. Coming up, one of the most powerful moments of the season happened off the court for South Carolina. My grandmother, Hattie Brakes, grew up in this area, actually four, blo four blocks from the governor's mansion to be exact. When she was a child, she couldn't even walk on the grounds of the University of South Carolina. She would have to walk around the campus just to get to where she needed to go. If only she was here today to see that the same grounds she had to walk around, it now is the same grounds that houses a statue of her granddaughter. It made me cry, honestly, because she just said such powerful things. And when she talked about how her grandmother couldn't walk through the campus, she'd have to walk all the way around. And the same campus she couldn't do that on, her granddaughter has a statue of her. And that is so, that is so powerful because it's just shown how first, not too long ago, not too long ago this was, and how Asia didn't let that stop her. Asia set a goal for herself and she was able to accomplish everything she wanted. How beautiful is that? The inspiration that an alum from the University of where Aaliyah Boston now is playing, the impact that that has had on her. She's already, she's got a great career started of her own, but to see that, to witness that, to know personally, Asia Wilson, that was a beautiful moment this season. Yeah, it was back on January 18th. South Carolina dedicated a statue to Asia Wilson, the greatest player in the history of their program. She's incredible. A three-time first-team All-American, a three-time SEC Player of the Year. She was the number one pick in the WNBA and the reigning WNBA MVP. And probably one of the most impactful moments I've witnessed in her career. You guys, you and I have been front and center for her playing career, but but off the court. I mean, I sent that video to so many of my closest friends and family who, who admittedly cried watching it because maybe they didn't even realize just how real that was for so many people and just a beautiful moment from Asia Wilson. And, and I bet you her grandma was so proud too. And you just look at what an impact Asia Wilson has had in turning the program around at South Carolina. She built it into a championship powerhouse in the country. Yeah, a South Carolina native cho choosing to stay at home to play for Dawn Staley, believed in what Coach Staley was building, and they won a national championship in 2017 and could have won a national championship last year had everything not been shut down. And that's on the mind of Don Staley and the players at South Carolina. They want an opportunity again to play for another national championship. Don Staley has also helped them here at the SEC tournament. They have won five SEC tournament titles, five SEC regular season titles. And they have come out in this game so smooth. You know what they're doing? making layups they're making layups that has been really a thorn in their side this season i was gonna say it's about time it's yeah you, <laughs> hey, when you get into the tournament time when you're in march you have got to make layups and you have got to make your free throws zaya cook run that back highlight reel showtime Held ball, it's going to be South Carolina. Yeah, we got to see this again. Zaya Cook is a highlight waiting to happen. And the spin move on Megan Abrams on the left side with the finish. She baited the defense to the middle, then turned it to the outside. It's been so interesting to watch her evolution at South Carolina. Just a sophomore. So it hasn't been long. Well, because she is so talented, the ability to score the basketball, the expectations of Zaya Cook continue to rise. 
and Don Staley just wants her to continue taking good shots, playing on balance, decision-making improvement, and that's coming along. It was two weeks ago. They've really been working on her shot to make sure she gets her feet set, that she's in rhythm. She doesn't make a good shot hard to take. Well, she, she wants to be dynamic on every play. Sometimes fundamentals works just as well. You don't want the spin move on every play? I mean, I do. Yeah. I, hey, <laughs> Courtney Lyle, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> Winner of this game is moving on to the semifinals. They will get either Tennessee or Ole Miss, who will play tonight, approximately 8.30, our final quarterfinal game of the day. Victoria Saxton battling with three Alabama defenders. It has been a rough shooting night offensively for Alabama, shooting just 28% from the field after they shot 51% yesterday. Well, and Araya Copeland has not been a factor either. She had 22 points yesterday. But you look at Boston on the back side, she has a smaller Megan Abrams playing the back of that zone and the lob over the top, that's gonna be there all day. Boston has five points, five rebounds in 10 minutes of action. That's the ninth turnover for Alabama. Oh, Henderson thought about it. Ami here on the breakdown. But you could see unselfish basketball. The ball went ahead to Destiny Henderson. She passed up a shot to make a pass to Zaya Cook, and then Zaya made another pass. Don Staley has talked to us about trying to teach her team that, yeah, you might have a good shot, but be willing to make that pass to get an even better shot for your teammate. But now you've, you've got to find that fine line between making that pass and overpassing. And I think just this last possession, Destiny Henderson overpassed. Jordan Lewis short on the layup. And both Lewis and Henderson hit the deck hard. Normally we're talking about Victoria Saxon or Leah Boston on the block, but we got little Henny. Destiny Henderson on the block there on Jordan Lewis. For fourth block of the season. <laughs> Come on, big girl, you're a big guard, number three. <laughs> South Carolina is first in the nation in blocks per game. They average 7.3. Gamecocks came out and scored 26 points in the first quarter, only gave up six. No bucket. They wave it off, but the foul is called. And that's the third foul on Allie Craig Cruz. Well, Ariah Copeland, she's going to have to play more minutes and she's going to have to be a factor inside if Alabama wants to have a, ch a chance at getting back in this ball game. You know, she's on the bench right now. She has struggled in the previous two meetings this season against Alabama being held to single digits in both of those games. Well, she's tried to score over and uh, ineffective against Aaliyah Boston. So what do you do? You maybe have to just think about moving her around. Taylor Sutton with a little acrobats. Destiny Henderson crushed it. Henderson's in double figures. Everybody but Destiny Littleton have scored for South Carolina. Out of bounds off of South Carolina. It will stay with Alabama, but this is this one's been all Gamecocks. South Carolina has been in control from the start of this ball game, continuing on. They've done it outside. They've run in transition. They've done it inside. What is it that South Carolina can't do? They're trying to get to the semifinals tomorrow. Well, Don Staley said, if you want to be an underdog, you came to the wrong program because her team is playing like the top dog tonight. Up big here in the first half. They're doing it all, executing on an out-of-bounds play. 
no wasted possessions. Doing it with their defense, guys, getting out in transition. That's their bread and butter. That's what makes them so good. You can't forget Aaliyah Boston, the sophomore. 22 points in the paint for South Carolina. How about Zaya Cook putting on the show? Buzzer beater and a little bit of sauce after. South Carolina looking good early in this game. And Steffi, what I see when I look at the stat sheet, the balance of shot attempts. It's not one player that is dominating, taking shots. It's a little bit from everybody. You look at the field goal percentage right here. 16 to 27, are you kidding me? Four for, four for six from the three-point line. And look at the paint. Dominance. That's what the Gamecocks do. Already 22 points in the paint. They average about 44 a game. Yeah, it's been all South Carolina. They have come out and looked confident and in control, and they've played pretty deliberate. You know, the thing that I am impressed with, with Don Staley, with the season you had last year, expe expectations are way to the ceiling. And when you're not reaching, you're not living up to those expectations, a lot of times a coach can be frustrated. There can be a lot of negativity, but that's not Don Staley. She has stayed with this team. Now she has been tough on them, but she also has been encouraging and positive with her team. She is getting results here in this SEC tournament quarterfinal, a spot in the semifinals on the line as South Carolina looks to repeat as SEC tournament champs. Got to win three games to do it. South Carolina is projected as a number one seed, according to Charlie Cream. They are four in the net at 19 and four overall, 14 and two in the SEC, but those two losses are to Tennessee and Texas A&M. Well, and when you look at South Carolina, and I think that when Don Staley listened to Charlie Cream say that they're not safe on that one seed line, well, she's gonna remove, her intention is to remove all doubt this weekend. Jordan Lewis hits the three. Alabama shooting just 28% from the field. Russell's got to use that screen at the top. Cook's floater is short. Jasmine Walker looking for her first point, and she gets him in the short corner. Now that first crew for South Carolina, they recognize the patience and passing with a purpose against a zone. You don't want to be reversing the basketball until all options have been checked off. That's a little better patience there. Ami here passes out of it, and they call. But she's th you watch Don Staley after this three-point shot right here, still paying attention to detail. You've got to cover Jordan Lewis from the three. Don Staley was not plit was not happy when that happened. She's doing a little little zen, little calming, little woo saw. <laughs> she don't want, she hates it when there are breakdowns with the defense. Blocking foul called on Alabama. Zaya Cook was charging to the basket. It's the second on Sutton. I like that sweater that Don has on. I'm sure it's some <laughs> kind of designer that I have no I idea either, what it is. But I like it. <laughs> She's dressing things up for the SEC tournament. She normally is rocking some tight outfits. Well, it has been all about her Gamecocks in this first half. Scored 26 points in the first quarter, only gave up six points to Alabama in the opening frame. When you look at Coach Staley constantly teaching. You're up 41-17, and she is coaching Letitia Ami here. Look, she knows right now you're coaching to continue to advance to get better. You can't rest on your laurels. 
And these minutes for the non-starters are going to be crucial, too, because you're going to need that depth going down the stretch. She's talked about it multiple times. Letitia Ami here is going to be key, and Lily Grissett. You've got to have your bench players ready to go. Winner of this game is moving on to the semifinals. They will either get Tennessee or Ole Miss. That game is coming up right here on the SEC Network at 8.30 Eastern. We already saw Texas A&M and Georgia make their way to the semifinals. What do you think about Texas A&M? That win over LSU. Wow. Yeah. Again. Yep. I mean, and the balance, uh, the stepping up uh, across the board. From India Jones, you know she's one of my my favorites oh, yeah. with the energy that she brings. But off the bench, Alexis Morris came in, and it was just like I mean, it was like Gary Blair was playing cards, and he just drew from his stack and said, "That's my trump. That's what I'm playing right there," and it worked. When she came into the game, it got spicy because she brought so much energy. Alexis Morris had 13 points. She was one of five players in double figures for Texas A&M. They are into the semifinals. Yeah, they are going to be, I, I think they're a national championship contending team. Texas A&M is going to play Georgia, who dominated Kentucky, too, in that second quarterfinals game. Maya Caldwell, what? Where has she been? Last two games, she's like, oh, oh coach, I'm here. Call my number. 20 points today. Here right. I am. Right? And Joni Taylor has done a great job with Georgia, the SEC Coach of the Year. Jenna Stady had 20 points tonight oh, also. Yes, she did. <laughs> Out of bounds off of South Carolina. It will be Alabama ball. I know, I know there's only a minute 40 left in this quarter, but there's been some slippage. They're not as sharp as how they started. I can guarantee you Don Staley will address that in the locker room. Yeah, Alabama has kept up with them 15 to 14. South Carolina outscoring Alabama in this quarter just by a point. Still with a large lead. Foul on Aaliyah Boston. See, that's the best way to guard Aaliyah Boston is give the ball to Araya Copeland inside and try to get fouls on Boston. If you can cause Boston to have to go to the bench, hey, that's the best way to defend the big girl. Offensive foul. Jordan Lewis. It's the second on Lewis. South Carolina in a scoring drought, 340 without a bucket. And the movement of the ball, the timing, that's a great hit to Lily Grissett, but she's got to come up there when she flashes to be an option, not just to catch the basketball. Jasmine Walker steps into it, looks pretty. That's what Alabama needs to get Jasmine Walker heated up. She is projected as a first round pick in the WNBA draft. She has gotten herself in tremendous shape this season, has had a fantastic year, putting up the best numbers of her career. Just stuffed Aaliyah Boston. But then fouled her. Good things happen when you give the ball to Aaliyah Boston inside. It puts the pressure on the opponents, the pressure on the defense. She needs to touch it at least 50% of the time within your offense. She has never been afraid of contact, even when she played her first game as a freshman. Remember, she had a triple-double in her debut. You remember when she came over to us and said, I like physicality. Yeah. What freshman says that? Not very many. Aaliyah Boston does. And she's a good decision maker, too. She really is a very smart, cerebral player. And Don Staley talks about when she came in last year, she was asking a lot of questions, but they were intelligent questions because she just wanted to understand. And once you told her and explained it, she could put it into action. Yeah. 
chance for Alabama to get a little momentum with a bucket. Walker. The freshman, Anaya Russell, is going to tie her up. Alabama has the possession arrow, but a good hustle play from the only freshman on this South Carolina roster. How successful was Alabama in their underneath out of bounds plays against Missouri yesterday? Ran the same play three times and scored on it. They'll get Lily Grissett to foul. So Destiny Littleton is going to run over the table and check in for South Carolina. She'll replace Zaya Cook. Yeah, Cook already has one foul. Don Staley doesn't want to take any chances. Hannah Barber. She hits it. A little momentum for Alabama, but they have got a lot of work to do. Underneath out of bounds has been a strength of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Hits Copeland, and then the inbounder, most dangerous player on the floor, Hannah Barber, buries the three. South Carolina has a big lead as we head into the half here in Greenville. They're up 42 to 26. Let's get it back to Alyssa. South Carolina saying hello SEC tournament. We are here. They lead it big time at the half, 42 to 26. They led by as many as 27 points in the first half of this one. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Steffi Sorensen also with us. How about these Gamecocks? They were scoring pretty easily down low. Well, they found an answer of going against the zone of Alabama and the movement. When you let the ball come inside, touch the paint, then the defense is going to collapse because you've got four players. When Aaliyah Boston touches the basketball, they're collapsing in. And the post players for South Carolina, they're willing passers. Zaya Cook is able to knock it down. And then you watch, you've got Victoria Saxon. As she dives down, she gets two feet in the paint. She's able to seal Araya Copeland, get inside position for finishing the easy two. South Carolina controlled that first half, but Steffi, Alabama did go on a run there towards the end of the second quarter. Yeah, they did. They outscored South Carolina 20 to 16 in that second quarter. And I think Araya Copeland, she's going to have to stay on the floor, stay out of foul trouble, make her impact felt on the inside. But I'd like to see Jasmine Walker flex her muscle. We're talking about a WNBA draft pick. I'd like to see her get going. She's got just five points right now in this game. Well, Ryan Copeland has got to. She only has one foul as we start the second half, and she's got to try to attack, get position on Aaliyah Boss, and possibly draw some fouls on number four for South Carolina. There's a little spark. Jordan Lewis will hit the three ball for Alabama to keep that streak going. They've hit their last four shots. Alabama still in the 2 3 zone. Aaliyah Boston steps up and ends that scoring drought for the Gamecocks. Boston is so good because of her versatility. She has that face-up face up game about her. So she's not a big girl. You give it to her at the free throw line and everybody drop off. You've got to respect that shot. Well, and they're going to whistle her for the foul. If you make the attempt to go to Araya Copeland inside, look, you make the officials, are they going to call it or are they, are they not? And that's how you get a foul on Aaliyah Boston. And that's her second foul. Walker was flashing towards the, the bucket, but South Carolina took it. That is the 11th turnover for Alabama. Saxton gets her own board. Henderson with the floater. Destiny Henderson up to 12 points. Henderson under control. She looks, the game has slowed down for her tonight. She has made some terrific on-balance shots and attacks to the basket. Her game really started to turn the corner after that UConn game. She was forcing things a little bit, drove the ball too low, caused some turnovers, had eight turnovers in that game. Since then, she knows what she needs to fix. Well, she had to adjust to playing without Ty Harris. You know, Ty Harris would bring the, 
be the calming factor and play alongside Destiny Henderson. Now it's her show. She has the keys to the bus. Travel. Turnover number seven for South Carolina. Well, Henderson reading the opportunity that she had after an offensive rebound. Jordan Lewis, a weak closeout, and Henderson goes right in, pulls up for the jumper, and knocks it down. Henderson, one of two players for South Carolina in double figures. She joins Zaya Cook with 12 points as well. And Cook almost had herself a steal. It will stay with the Crimson Tide. What Alabama's got to look for is see where Ariah Copeland is because she's trying to screen the backside of the offense. But the strong side has got to be patient and let Copeland get set. See, Hannah Barber almost took off too soon. And then she got stuffed by Boston. Bree Beal. It will stay with South Carolina. Gamecock's going to make a substitution. Lily Grissett will replace Victoria Saxton. South Carolina has won five of the last six SEC tournament titles, looking to get to the semifinals with a win today. Pretty. Footwork. It's like dancing. Ballerina like. She's just got such great balance and coordination for her size. Ariah Copeland gets through Boston. Remember, she has two fouls. Well, see, that's where Alabama needs to continue to go to Copeland because now you're forcing Aaliyah Boston to play conservatively on the defensive side. Copeland's got six points. We talk about that Alabama trio, the big three, if you will. Jordan Lewis, the only one of the three in double figures. She has 11. Copeland has six. Walker has five. Well, and Walker right now has Lily Grissett guarding her. She needs to be aggressive offensively, and there she goes. Right on cue. Jasmine Walker up to seven points now, coming off an 11-point performance. Not her best performance in their last game, a win over Missouri. And Alabama two points at a time, chiseling away of this, at the South Carolina lead. Zaya Cook has had a pure shot tonight. She's on one. She's on one. She is in the zone. Number one, Zaya Cook. The first team all SEC selection had 21 points the last time out against the Crimson Tide. Oh, that was a great, that would have been beautiful on the finish, but again, another missed layup by South Carolina. Lewis fired up, going to that free throw line. Jordan Lewis has such great strength. Reads the situation, change of directions. Comes across Main Street, gets the finish, and an opportunity at the free throw line. 16 points for Jordan Lewis against Missouri yesterday, already at 13. Make it 14, and we're in the third quarter, but she needs some help. It's going to be a foul on Copeland. She pushed Boston from behind. That's her second. And Copeland looks over at Christy Curry and says, I'm OK. But Christy Curry said, no, you're not. <laughs> I need you later on. Come take a seat with me. Allie Craig Cruz will replace her. Back to Henny, and it works. What do we say? The most dangerous player. Underneath the out of bounds person, the passer, the passer the person that passes the ball in, everybody forgets about. And she's the one that can step in and be the most dangerous. Destiny Henderson now 14 points. Three players for Carolina in double figures. Watch 
stretch out. Henderson can go quickly. Lady Grissett gets open underneath. Points for the senior. Let me tell you, if I'm a player with South Carolina and Destiny Henderson gets the ball, take off running because she will give it to you. She will deliver the basketball. Just run. Zaya Cook called for the foul, but South Carolina still scoring at will. Running in transition. Leland Grissett said, hey, here I come, here I come. Give it to me right here. Get two. Tonight, a top 25 battle. First and pushing tempo. Tennessee trailed by 16 points. They have a one point lead. Ray Burrell at the top of the key. Give the ball to Renaya Davis. That is the game plan. Worston running out of time. Give it to Davis. That's a pretty good decision. Tennessee defeats a top five team. And they trailed by 16 points. It was the game that shocked the SEC. Tennessee was able to take down South Carolina, ending their 31-game SEC win streak. Could we see a rematch in the semifinals tomorrow? We will have Tennessee and Ole Miss coming up tonight at 8.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network. But if Shakira Austin has anything to say about that for Ole Miss, it's going to be a battle. She has brought a March mentality to the Ole Miss Rebels, and it has become infectious. This Ole Miss basketball team, they're playing with a lot of confidence coming into Greenville, South Carolina. She had a career-high 29 points yesterday. That is the most points by an Ole Miss Rebel in this tournament since 2009. And Charlie Cream's talking about if Ole Miss were to get another win, they could be in the conversation for the NCAA tournament. Tennessee Ole Miss coming up tonight again at 8.30 after we are done with South Carolina and Alabama. Winner of this game gets the winner of that game. Woo! Ole Miss has put that proof on paper that they're turning this program around. Their first SEC tournament win since 2017. Third win against an AP ranked team this season. They have won two games in a row against ranked opponents. And Coach Yolette McPhee McEwen, she's here for it. She was so excited yesterday after they won. She was pumped up, yelling in the crowd, and her team feeds off her emotion. So the horn sounded in the middle of action. Cantner is going to head over to the scorer's table. We're being told the shot clock didn't start. Looking at the South Carolina team today, though, what's the biggest difference you see from their game on Sunday against Texas A&M? Well, they got off to a great start. The intensity was there, the sharing of the basketball. But I have seen through the second quarter and the third, a little bit of slippage. It's not the same intensity that they started with. And it's hard, you've got to remember, the Sharp team from last year had three freshmen on it. Well, now they're just sophomores. They still haven't learned all the lessons. Now they learned how they needed to start. The next lesson is how to keep it up for 40 minutes. South Carolina came out and scored 26 points in the first quarter. Their defense only gave up six points. They have reset the shot clock. They're testing it right now. Five seconds on it. Here's where it did not start when the ball came in. So still trying to figure out, make sure everything is set correctly. And this is frustrating as a coach when you've got momentum, especially when it is for South Carolina, their first game 
in the SEC tournament. It's the first time playing here. You want that momentum. You want the game to keep going. This stoppage right now, you can use it as a timeout, but you want your players to play. They're going to have to go and double check how much time should have come off the clock. That's what Decantner is doing at the monitor right now. South Carolina already has three players in double figures. Aaliyah Boston is one of them. She's a rebound away from a double-double. I'm just really impressed with how South Carolina has gone back to playing through her because the last few games of the regular season, you look at the stat sheet and Aaliyah Boston, single digits, that should never happen when South Carolina plays anybody. Yeah, Aaliyah Boston's last three games before tonight, she averaged seven points per game. Before that, she was averaging 14 points per game. And that's where she needs to be at a minimum of 14 points per game. You have got to continue to give the ball to Aaliyah Boston. And Don Staley said to, her, to us too that Aaliyah Boston can't be passive when she gets the ball, even in a double team. You got to figure it out and you've got to find a way to score, not to always be a passer if you get the double team inside. Has she done that tonight? Absolutely. She has been aggressive and has the mentality and pick, picked her poison when to score it and when to pass it out. So I think we've got the clock fixed. 424 on the game clock, five seconds on the shot clock for Alabama. This is Destiny Rice. Had a good look at the basket, but missed the shot. Boston working on Copeland. Three defenders crash in. Possession arrow pointing to South Carolina. But that's an example of when the ball came in to Aaliyah Boston, she received a double team, a probably two and a half double team, but she still was aggressive and had an opportunity, but she's got to finish that shot. Zaya Cook. She will finish six of 10 for Zaya Cook from the field. She has really kicked into cruise control, not forcing anything, it's just kind of coming to her. Mariah Copeland answers. Copeland up to eight points. Has not missed a shot. And I think Alabama was a little hesitant to go to Copeland in the first quarter. But since really the second quarter, third quarter, they have gone inside to number 22. And Copeland has been productive. She had 22 points and 10 rebounds yesterday against Missouri. There, they go back to her, but she's too far under the basket, has to dribble out. Megan Abrams around the rim. When you look at Zaya Cook right here off the underneath out of bounds play, she's patient and then at the right time comes off the screen of Aaliyah Boston, steps right into her shot and knocks it down. Cook's got 16 to lead the Gamecocks shooting 60% from the field. That's the kind of percentage Don Staley wants to see from Zaya Cook. She has had a tendency in some games this year to be a volume shooter, but in this game, very efficient. She has had double figure points in every game but three, and those were back to back to back. It was that stretch in the middle of the SEC season where Cook went a little cold. And again, you gotta understand she's a sophomore. So it's not going to be just quickly, all of a sudden, get it. There are going to be good times and then bad times. And now it looks like she is getting it. It's coming together for Zaya Cook. I think there's another problem with the clock not starting. So they're back over at the scorer's table, table trying to get the clock situated here. Look. Coming up, yeah. <laughs> She's like, look, don't delay it. She's like, my team is ready. We don't need extra time, ready to play. This is a player that plays with, that coach, that coaches with a lot of emotion. 
And that's after the game was over. She even she even bear hugged Steffi Swartz, and Steffi said she got attacked by Coach Yo. I'm not gonna lie, it took the breath out of me. It, she hit me pretty hard, caught me a little <laughs> off guard, but she's emotional, and I think one thing talking to her about what she's done um, away from the court, she's taken a break from social media. She feels like that's made a positive impact on her life. She's more focused, more clear. See the headphones are in, she's locked in just like her players. Hey, Steffi, when you see Coach Joe coming, bend your knees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as tall as you, but. <laughs> well, you, that'll help you have brace uh, for the impact. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> She's done a wonderful job with that Ole Miss program. They are getting set to face Tennessee coming up in our final quarterfinal of the day at 8.30 Eastern here on the SEC Network. And, of course, the Lady Ball fans have been in the building all week. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Renaya Davis and Ray Burrell to go along with the bigs, Tamari Key and Cassie Kishketawa of Tennessee. Another bucket for Jasmine Walker. Alabama is projected to get in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1999. South Carolina obviously projected as a number one seed as Aaliyah Boston finishes. Thirteen double-doubles for Aaliyah Boston this season. Ten of those have come against SEC teams. Offensive foul. Yeah, Jordan Lewis got there. That's a good defensive play. Lily Grissett would have been more, much better served to continue to go to the light to the right side. She crossed over, tried to come back to the left, and ran over Jordan Lewis. Travel. Turnovers have cost Alabama today. That is their 15th turnover. South Carolina has scored 18 points off of turnovers. Keeps telling me that she has expanded her game. She's just not comfortable taking that face up shot, but she's a very capable scorer from there. I love how Leah Boston moves without the basketball. There she is at the top of the key. When the ball came inside to Victoria Saxon and the double team came, not only does Aaliyah Boston cut down the lane, but she gets position on Jordan Walker, that inside seal to get the easy layup. Aaliyah Boston, 11 points in the regular season meeting against Alabama. She's got 12 tonight here by the third quarter, five of nine from the field, and she's got that double-double. And that's going to happen for South Carolina and Aaliyah Boston if you give her the basketball. The guards have been more deliberate, the key word from Don Staley, of getting the ball inside. It's not even been a question mark, or should I, should I, or shouldn't I? I should. And then when that happens, good things happen for all of them. Well, I think Don Staley has that ingrained into her team now. I mean, every time we talk to a player, they talk about being deliberate and showing up on the court. You know, you talk about that deliberate, it takes away the question mark. So now when the players know that Don Staley has said deliberate, Don Staley is looking, if you're not sure, you're probably not going to play because you're not playing deliberate. Third foul on Taylor Sutton. Tennessee arriving here at the arena. They are up next. They get the winner of this game. If South Carolina hangs on, they've got a huge lead. Remember, Tennessee beat South Carolina in the regular season. Tennessee's got to get past Ole Miss first. Yeah, Tennessee's going to have to worry about stopping Shakira Austin. 
Donetta Johnson. Austin, as we mentioned, for Ole Miss, 29 points, a career high. There was no way Arkansas could stop her. Tennessee's got a little more size down low, though, than Arkansas. Well, the thing that Coach Yolette McPhee McEwen told us was that last night, Shakira Austin was scoring inside. We're going to see more of a face-up game, a little versatility of Austin's game tonight going against Tennessee. Pull the bigs away, make them guard her away from the basket. Yeah, she has a nice skill set, can do a lot of different things. We've seen her handle the basketball too. She'll bring it up the floor sometimes. We're going to have some wow moments from Shakira Austin tonight. There she is, the first team All-SEC selection for Ole Miss coming up in our next game. Texas A&M and Georgia have already made their way to the semifinals earlier today. It'll be South Carolina or Alabama advancing from this game. <laughs> Hannah Barber has it knocked free, Zaya Cook. A little too spicy. For Zaya Cook. Got to, sometimes you got to stick to the fundamentals, Don Staley. <laughs> Again, another therapy moment. Little Wusha. Two second difference between the shot clock and the game clock for Alabama. The game clock for Alabama. Look, you can't get careless and start clock watching. That's a bad pass by Zaya Cook. And you know what? Coach saw it. Coach saw it, film don't lie. You're going to see that tonight when we review this film. Cook's had a pretty good night, though. We'll give, I will give her credit. 16 points, <laughs> shooting 60% from the field. Uh, uh, coach Peck, were you a zen type of coach after a play like that? What was your style? I would just walk to the other end of the bench. You know, because the thing is, and in the game, you don't want to really exhibit too much emotion and get the players feeling bad for themselves so but you sometimes you just got it's time and place for yeah. everything full moment full okay. moment and okay. then i'm back Good to know right there <laughs> you want a title you want a national championship yep like oh man <laughs> I think if Zai Cook had made that shot, that might have <laughs> made, made up for it. Pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alabama will quickly sub back in some scorers with Jordan Lewis and Jasmine Walker. Four seconds left. South Carolina has led by as many as 27 points tonight. Gamecocks just 10 minutes away from the semifinals. They're in control right now, headed into the fourth quarter. Can they lock in for 10 more minutes to advance to the semifinals? Come on back and we'll see. Dawn Staley in this last huddle, even though South Carolina's got a huge lead, she is fired up coaching. Well, I think that after you saw the way that South Carolina came out in the first quarter, they were focused and locked in. There has been some game slippage through the next three, next two quarters. So she is letting them know, reminding them how we started this game, and that is how she expects them to play for 40 minutes. So they've got 10 minutes to pick things back up. South Carolina outscored Alabama in the first quarter by 20 points. They are dominating in the paint, 14 more paint points than Alabama and 20 points off turnovers. But Alabama has outscored South Carolina in the second quarter, and then they did it again in the third quarter. And that's where I keep saying, look, just because you're winning, that doesn't overlook breakdowns and mistakes that you have made. And look at Copeland going to work inside. 
She's got double figures. She got switched on to Bree Bill off the ball screen. So now she has the size advantage. And the best play to give Copeland the ball is in the middle of the floor. Defense, as soon as they commit one side, she can take advantage with the counter move. Now, Christy Curry talked to us about Raya Copeland saying they need her to continually work. At first, she would just seal and then not reseal. Now she is constantly working down there because she wants the basketball. Well, and throughout the season, she's gotten in better condition. It's a lot of work for the big girls down low. So after you post one time, look, game's not over. Look at the effort on the boards from Copeland. She came in in the Missouri game the last three minutes and 30 seconds. Christy put her back in and gave them some tough minutes. Well, and I think that she's continuing to push, especially when Christy Curry looks and says, hey, we're going we're gonna to get an invite to the NCAA tournament, and Copeland's going to be a vital part of their progress. It'll be the first time since 1999 that Alabama has made the NCAA tournament. Charlie Cream feels that they are in the field. Roll around and drop. Zaya Cook. Charlie Cream has Alabama as a six seed. Jordan Lewis from range. She's done that only four times tonight. Defensive breakdown, lack of communication with Destiny Henderson. When the cutter, when two people went with the cutter, that left Lewis open. Alabama's got a chance to cut this to single digits. They trailed by 27. Hannah Barber. Those opportunities are presenting themselves for Alabama. Right now, South Carolina's getting lucky that, South, that Alabama's missing shots. Yeah, what's changed for South Carolina? I mean, they're shooting 51% from the field. Well, right now, it's not their offense, it's the defense. The breakdown's on the defensive side of the ball. Boston from the free throw line. Easy rebound for Henderson. And Aaliyah Boston will go to the, the free throw line. Let me tell you, if there's anybody you don't want to leave, it's Jordan Lewis, Jasmine Walker, cutting back door, miscommunication defensively for South Carolina, and Jordan Lewis made him pay. South Carolina can't sit here and think they have an 11 point lead and everything's well and good and be on cruise control. Jordan Lewis, Jasmine Walker, Hannah Barber, they can heat up as well as Megan Abrams down the stretch. Alabama trying to push the defending SEC tournament champions. Alabama trying to cut down this South Carolina lead. Araya Copeland's got 13 points and six rebounds. Well, she only had single digits in the first two meetings between in the game against South Carolina. And in this third quarter, she then went to work. She has been able to make her presence felt. Alabama has been intentional about getting the ball inside to Araya Copeland. And she has been productive for the Crimson Tide. Now she was one of the big three they needed to get going. Jasmine Walker, Jordan Lewis, and Araya Copeland have been the trio for Alabama who have made this team go. Tonight, all but Jasmine Walker in double figures, and Walker right on the cusp with nine points. Well, she, and if she gets going in this fourth quarter as well, it could spell trouble for South Carolina. Yeah, I call, guys, I called that game uh, where South Carolina played Alabama in the last game, and Orion Copeland looked different. I mean, she was timid. She, she didn't go out of Leah Boston at all. I'm watching a different post player today. I feel like she's got a lot of confidence after that Missouri game. She's calling for the basketball. More importantly, I think Christy Curry's biggest concern was her getting into foul trouble. She hasn't been in the foul, foul trouble today, and she's repeatedly worked play after play to demand the basketball. So I'm watching a different post player right now. Yeah, Steffi, that's something that Christy Curry talked to us about is just hammering home the message to Araya Copeland that she can play down low with anybody in this league to get that confidence up, and she looks more confident. She does, and looks determined. 
She wants the ball. You look at her making, trying to make contact and positioning against Aaliyah Boston. Jordan Lewis drives the baseline. Well, here's the thing Alabama can do as well. They are a team that shoots 75% from the free throw line. Stay in the attack mode. Jordan Lewis has the, the ability and the creativity to get herself, if not the basket, getting to the free throw line. Alabama is first in the SEC in free throw percentage. They are 10th in the nation in free throws made. And that's where they have the ability to shoot the three. And they're not a team that I say, don't settle for three-point shots because Alabama can shoot the ball from the perimeter. But also use that free throw line. Stay in attack mode. In South Carolina, the missing layups have returned. It's a good decision by Hannah Barber. Oh, Araya Copeland. Fifteen now for Copeland. First time this season she's been in double figures against South Carolina. Oh. Oh. Hannah Barber is such a headsy basketball player. She recognized and don't force up a shot, but she just she went deep enough on the penetration to get Aaliyah Boston to commit, and that left time for Ryan Copeland for the shot. They've cut it to single digits. Alabama trailed by 27. Thought their bench was going to explode if Jordan Lewis hit that. And there's a blocking foul called on Barber. And Hannah Barber, she just backed up and she got herself in that restricted area. You get your heels inside that arc picture in the lane, that's going to be a block. South Carolina is not a great free throw shooting team. They shoot 65% on the season, but they have done very well tonight. That's, that percentage is up to 75% from the charity stripe. Two areas that South Carolina has got to clean up, layups and free throws. First quarter, layups were great, but then it's gone back to how South Carolina has played all season the, the rest of this ball game. Lewis off the screen. And yeah, that's going to be a travel or an offensive foul. They'll call the travel. I saw Megan Abrams throw out the arm bar, too. Yeah, when she extends that arm out. But the thing that the guards for Alabama, what they have to do, give Copeland time to seal before or get set before you take off off the dribble. Yeah, Copeland is the key right now. 15.6 rebounds. South Carolina only has five points in the fourth quarter. Brissett is blocked by Copeland. She can affect this game on both ends. They go inside, number 22, Araya Copeland. She gets around Boston. They give her the basketball. Let her work. Araya Copeland has helped Alabama get back in this ball game. Oh, a much needed bucket for the Gamecocks. Destiny Henderson. Trip to the ball. 
Jordan Lewis thinking about it. Tough decision to go right at Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, that's not a good one. Fade away! You blink, and South Carolina has pushed it back. Alabama thought they had a shot. They were going at Copeland. They had cut it to seven because Copeland had gone to work inside. But South Carolina right now thinking they don't want to be denied. Destiny Henderson knocking down the three. And then the block, the defense, the shutdown. Coming. South Carolina wants to play tomorrow. Ole Miss waiting in the wings to take the court for the second time at the SEC tournament. They will play Tennessee. At approximately 8.30 tonight, our final final quarter final of the evening. But South Carolina and Alabama have got to finish their game first. Winner of this one moving on to face either Tennessee or Ole Miss tomorrow in the semifinals. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Steffi Sorensen with you. Alabama went on a little bit of a run there, cut it the lead to seven. They have trailed by 27 points in this game. You take a look at the largest deficits overcome in the SEC tournament. The largest was 18 points as Mississippi State defeated South Carolina back in 2009. But South Carolina has pushed the lead back to double figures. But it's because Zaya Cook has really been able to answer every time Alabama made a little bit of a run. Zaya Cook, and this is a big moment player. She likes the big moments. She likes to hush the crowd of the opponents. She likes to be that dynamic guard to make it happen. That's a competitor right there. Number one, Zaya Cook. 20 points for the fifth time this season. Zaya Cook shooting 18, excuse me, shooting eight of 15 from the field. But when Alabama was making their run, South Carolina was one of five on layups. They've got to finish the bunnies in the paint. It's been a problem all season for South Carolina. Foul away from the ball. And they call it on Bree Beal. So two more fouls by South Carolina and Alabama then the rest of the way would be going to the free throw line shooting two on each foul. Lewis falls to the ground. Jump ball, possession arrow pointing to the Gamecocks. I tell you, the effect on the game by Aaliyah Boss and she jumped out and hedged on that screen. She tied up Jordan Lewis. You watch Aaliyah Boston. She's behind Ariah Copeland. And then surprise, there's 6'5", number four, Aaliyah Boston. Henderson drives and kicks. They'll spin it around. It's too much dribbling for South Carolina. It was automatic on the catch of every person that caught the ball, that caught, put the ball on the floor. You've got to look at your options before you catch the basketball, then decide if you're going to dribble it, shoot it, or pass it. They'll have nine seconds on the shot clock. That's the way to go. She knew what she was going to do with it before she caught it. 22 points for Zaya Cook, and South Carolina has 24 points now off of Alabama's 19 turnovers. Look, Zaya Cook executes underneath out of bounds plays, 218. Just flashing to the open area, catch and shoot. Jordan Lewis will be at the free throw line as Bree Beal is whistled for her fourth. But watch this, South Carolina, that's four fouls. From now on, whenever South Carolina fouls Alabama, they're going to the free throw line. And they're first in the SEC in free throw percentage. I mean, this is the best thing for Alabama right now. They're able to accumulate points while the clock is stopped. 
Crimson Tide have cut the lead to seven at one point after trailing by 27. Taylor Sutton back in for Alabama. But now Alabama can't sit back and let South Carolina lose, use a lot of clock. South Carolina started this quarter one for eight. Since then, they've hit three in a row. Possession arrows pointing to Alabama. So now Alabama has got to use options, driving to the basket. If South Carolina's defense collapse, kick out to the three. Otherwise, be aggressive against this defense. Copeland going to work on Boston. Can she get around her? Yeah, but the shot won't drop. And Cook's got to slow down a little bit. She's got to get under control. The clock is to the friend, the friend of South Carolina. Winner moves on to the semifinals to face either Tennessee or Ole Miss. Boston repositions exactly where she wanted it. Aaliyah Boston has 16 points and 12 rebounds. The respect that the defense has of Aaliyah Boston. She put it on the floor. They didn't know whether to step to her or step away because she's got so much, so many different options in her game. We've seen her now this season even hit that three more than she has her freshman year. And she's comfortable taking that shot too. Like she, it's that's part of her repertoire. She was just whistled for her third foul. You watch Boston catch it. She's going to create a little space, steps back and knocks it down. I have asked Aaliyah Boston about the versatility, all the tricks that she has in her bag. She said it used to be a backpack, now it's a duffel bag. Ooh, I like it. Big size. She put in a lot of work in the offseason, went back home to the Virgin Islands and was able to get in the gym, work on that shot, work on that range, and we've seen it pay benefits. But she's got four fouls right now. So if I'm Alabama, I'm going straight at her. Every possession. And it doesn't have to be give the ball to Ariah Copeland. It could be Jordan Lewis off ball screens. Alabama takes a timeout, 138 to play. South Carolina came out and scored 26 points in the first quarter as you see Ole Miss getting set to come on deck. Alabama only scored six points in that opening frame, but they have outscored South Carolina in every quarter since. I think Alabama has just chipped away and they've gotten close at times. We talked about Araya Copeland. It's also been Jordan Lewis. She has been aggressive and attacking and getting to the free throw line. So now down the stretch again, Every foul that Alabama can draw from South Carolina, they're going to the free throw line. So I would look to go aggressive attack. Either make the defense shrink inside, that gives you openings for your three-point shot, or you either get the layup or you get yourself to the free throw line. Jordan Lewis has 25 points to lead Alabama. She had a career high 28 points against South Carolina earlier this season in that first meeting. Jordan Lewis is one of the smartest players, probably one of the going to be in the conversation and the legacy of some of the great point guards that played at the University of Alabama. Already graduated, working on her MBA as well. So impressive on the floor, imp impressive in the classroom. And Christy Curry says she comes to practice ready to go to work every day. She never has a bad day of practice. Another missed layup. That's an opportunity for Alabama. But now they can't use a whole lot of time. You've got a lot of ground to cover, down 12. 
Walker, what a block by Boston right up into the air. But that was risky. Remember, Aaliyah Boston's got four fouls. And now Alabama, they cannot allow South Carolina to use the clock. They need to foul. Unless Alabama is just going to concede and let them run out the clock. Here's Henderson, kicks to the corner to Cook. Well, South Carolina has led the entire way. And it looks like that spot in the semifinals will belong to the defending tournament champions. South Carolina scored 26 points in the first 10 minutes of the game and they controlled it all the way. Never trailed in this one and the Gamecocks are going back to the semifinals. South Carolina started out like gangbusters, especially playing to the, through the paint, moving the basketball. That is improvement. It wasn't consistent through the second, third, and fourth quarter, but it was there. That is something Don Staley can point to to go on to for tomorrow as they advance to the semifinals. Three players in double figures. Aaliyah Boston had 16 points. Destiny Henderson had 18. Zaya Cook led the way with 22 points the fifth time this season that Cook has had 20 or more points in a game. So South Carolina is in. We will see them tomorrow in our second semifinal. They will play the winner of Tennessee and Ole Miss. That game scheduled to tip off approximately 8.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network. But South Carolina proving they want to earn another championship. They are two wins away from doing so, and Aaliyah Boston is standing by with Steffi. Well, Leah, you guys came out hot, you know, against Alabama, but it, it kind of got close. What do you feel like made the difference for you guys to get the win? Um, I think I think that we just kind of picked up our pace. We kind of let go a little bit, um, and they went on a run, hit some threes, but I think we really just put our foot back on the gas pedal and kept pushing. When I say the word deliberate, what comes to mind? <laughs> <laughs> Coach Saley. I mean, she really talked to us about being deliberate, not letting people push us off our line, being dominant and going straight up in the post. And so that's what we were really working on over the past couple of days before we came here. And I think we did a pretty good job executing it. Probably could go be a little bit better, but we did pretty good today. Where do you feel like you guys could take away from this game moving forward to the semifinals? Um, I mean, they came back. And so I think one big takeaway would be we got to keep our foot on the gas pedal because teams are not just going to go away. This is the best conference. And so everyone's going to bring it every night. Thanks so much for your time, Aliyah. Thank you. Alyssa. All right, let's talk more about the Gamecocks' latest win as we welcome in head coach John Staley. Coach, thanks so much for being here. Congrats on the win. How would you evaluate your team's play from start to finish tonight? Um, I, I thought we got out to a quick start, which we wanted, you know, and then <laughs> and, and then the game <laughs> set, set in. You know, Alabama got out here uh, yesterday and got, got their feet under them. Um, but tough, 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 tough opponent in, in Alabama. They make you pay. They got counters. They have um, delayed action in their sets. And, you know, Christy got them going. And we knew it was going to be a tough, uh, not a blowout, but a tough game in which uh, um, it was going to be hard to get for, for 40 minutes and play at that, that, that level and that, you know, that intensity. Coach, Alabama did cut it close, but a lot of positives, right? 26 points in the first quarter. You had 19 turnovers, 21 points off of turnovers. Your guards were efficient. What were you most impressed with, though, from your team tonight? Um, I was impressed with our quick start and our ball movement. It's something that we've been working on. Um, you, you really wouldn't be able to see it until, you know, some of the games. But today I thought we reversed the ball. Um, we, um, we, we were just executing what we set out to execute offensively. Defensively, um, you know, I mean, that's a tough. I mean, it's, it's hard to measure your, your defense against someone that – that knows where they want the shots to come from. And if you're not locked, lock and key with, with every single player, they're going to make you pay. And they did that to us time and time again tonight. 
Dawn, I, I, I thought you were excellent the first 20 minutes of the, of the game. I thought you set the tone with really good defense. But on the offensive end is where I was impressed the most. Is that the look? You talked about ball movement. Earlier you've talked about Boston having some touches. Is that a glimpse of where you want this thing to go? We're, we're heading in the right direction. I thought Bob, uh, Leah Boston got a lot of touches um, in the position to score on the block and in the paint. So, um, And then look at our guards. They're, they were efficient. I, I tried to tell them that the more touches that uh, Leah and our post players get in the paint, the more opportunities that they're going to have, good opportunities, expected shots, and look at that shooting percentage goes up for our guards. Coach Staley, congrats on the win. Thanks for joining us. I'm contractually obligated to say, go give Champ a treat for me. <laughs> and Marvel. And Marvel. <laughs> and Marvel. Uh, great win from the Gamecocks.